What's up YouTube? This is YVE Squared, aka Jeeves476 for a tutorial on OpenMPT. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make 8-bit or chiptune music with this software. This software is for Windows and Linux running Wine. I don't know about OS X though, maybe Wine also. Anyways, to the tracker. First of all, you press File, New, and I prefer to use IT. These instructions will be repeated in the recap at the end. Now I know some of you would take a look at the interface and say, ah, complicated, evil, bad, goodbye, without giving it a second chance. Now check out these tabs and icons above. Let's head to the setup screen. Lots of tabs here. Let's take a look at each. General tab. You can set default directories for where you want to save songs and instruments and stuff to keep things tidy. For options, each item has its own description. Up to you if you want to check those or not. Sound card tab. Leave the sampling rate at 44,100 Hz, sound output to stereo, and the quality at 16 bits or higher, which is ironic since we're making 8-bit music. We're looking for a nice and clean sound. Mixer tab. Important. Set the resampling filter to no interpolation. For reasons that are too technical for this tutorial, no interpolation is best for chiptunes because it keeps the sound nice and crispy, even at lower notes. DSP tab, don't worry about it. Samples tab, forget about it. Keyboard tab, learn and make shortcuts here. Colors tab, edit colors to your own taste. MIDI tab, don't worry about it. Autosave tab. Now, it's up to you whether or not to keep autosaves. If you do, put them in a folder separate from the song's original directory. Otherwise, your folder would get messy really quickly, but that's just my preference. This is the general tab. You can do some volume and tempo control here. Set the sample volume to 96. Here you can see that there are 32 channels of sound. That's 32 instruments you can play at the same time, but that's not what we're going for. And to change that, you click Song Properties. Pick the number of channels from 1 to 127. The NES uses 5, and the Game Boy uses 4. I normally use 5 to 8 channels, but we'll start with 5. 8-bit but non-NES. This is the Instruments tab. What I normally do is make an instrument from a wave sample, so I import one. At first, when you press keys, the sound takes quite a while to fade out. So we'll change the fade out value to something much higher than 256. There, much better. Click Vol, and a blue line with two white squares should appear. You can drag the squares almost wherever you wish as long as it gives the volume or pitch effect you're looking for. All right, we're done setting up this instrument. As our next instrument, we import a rectangle wave. We set up its envelope by copying the envelope from the previous instrument. Set the fade out value to some ridiculously high number, and then we test it out. So far, so good. Next, we import a triangle wave. We set up its volume envelope like so. And now we test this one out. Hmm, there seems to be a problem here. I'll get to that problem later. We now import a white noise sample. The white noise channel is responsible for most of the percussion. We set this one up to be a hi-hat. Adjust the volume envelope as needed. Most percussion instruments do not need any envelope looping. We then head to the Samples tab. Here is where you can find all your imported sound samples. I set the volume for each sample to 75% to make them more visible. Notice how each sample is looped. If the samples in your instrument are being cut short, here's how to fix them. First you turn looping on, next you set the range of your loop, which may change depending on the size of your sample.
The white noise sample is quite large. But you'll need to loop it anyway. All right, the Patterns tab, the part we've all been waiting for. If you've skipped around and arrived at this section without setting up your instruments, go back to the Samples and Instruments sections. The first thing that may have caught your attention is the Pattern Editor. All your music gets written out here. What you see here is patterns of differently shaded lines. By default, every fourth line is a beat and every sixteenth line is a measure. This makes consecutive lines sixteenth notes. Let's start with the percussion line. If you don't have any experience in music theory, don't lose hope. It's all trial and error. Notice all those letters and numbers? This is what they mean. If you need a new instrument that has the same sample but with different envelopes, shift-click New Instrument to duplicate your current one. It's also a good idea to rename your instruments in order to distinguish them from one another. In this case, the closed hi-hat has been copied to a new instrument, and its volume envelope changed to turn it into an open hi-hat. And then we incorporate it into our pattern. Repeat this process to make a simple bass drum. Be sure to use lower notes for the bass drum. And now for the snare. Play around with the envelope until you think you got the right sound. And now we'll add a bass pattern. And now we'll add this pattern. Let's make that a chord. And now we'll add some variation. At this point, nearly everything you see here is just copy and paste. Just your good old control C, control V, over and over again. To shift the notes pitch, you highlight one or more notes and then you press control Q to shift it higher or control A to shift it lower. And there you have it, a full song. Exporting your music will be explained at the end of this video.
I'll show you some examples of 8-bit tracks I wrote. is Don't forget, OpenMPT also lets you make music with other instruments. Here's some drum and bass. How about some 8-bit drum and bass? Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for viewing and see you next time.